So I just wanted to continue the talk that we were having on the early church and what it is today and what I think I foresee happening in the future. Let me explain that the early church is stated to be one body, and it's obvious that it was one body because, um, one, that's what Paul was was preaching to the people, and uh, but in that same verse we were talking about yesterday, um, Acts chapter 2 and verse 44, uh, 42 through 47, it talks about them going, giving away everything to those in need. If you had a need, they gave it to you. And Romans 12, 5, which is another interesting passage that reflects the church in Acts 2 that we read about. Romans 12, 5 says that we're one body and each member belongs to its uh, to each other. Just as we're one in Christ, we're one in the church. And I just, I don't see, sometimes I don't see that. I don't see a oneness. Um, I see more of a more of a individualness. I guess I would say if that's even a word, uh, more than just you know. You've heard of the phrase "strength in numbers," I mean, and it's entirely true. We need everybody that we can to to join arms and to fight on to proclaim this message of Christ. Now, I'm not saying that this does not happen in church at all. It does happen. But we, and I'm not saying that there's a perfect church, but we should at least strive, each one of us, to strive to be flawless, um, to strive to, to uh, be one with each other, just as Christ is one with us. We, like I said, it's not going to be perfect, but I just, I'm really wondering here if each one of us gave 150% if we would bring just a few more people closer together, that would be one. You know, if if I'm the right arm and you're the left arm, with God at the head, you know, and we put together the full body of Christ through the church, imagine the impact that we could have on the world if we had everything covered. Now, I know in reality, um, I would not make up the right arm of Christ. I would probably make up a skin cell of Christ that would be, that would be you know, recycled <laughs> and done with. So, I'm not saying in the sense that I'm powerful enough to be Christ's right arm, but let's just put it this way. If, if between every church that exists, if we can come together through prayer, through fellowship, through giving... Um, through dis, uh, devotion and desire, if we can come together enough to to make um, to complete the body of Christ through our church and through all of those things, we're going to have a way better impact than just having half of it formed, than than having a, a maimed church that's not able to physically walk and talk and have the complete complete blessing of God. And I think when we become one. Um, as Romans 12, 5 says, I think when we become one, we're, we're able to do all of this. We're able to, we're able to reach out um, to the rest of the world. We're able to touch hearts in our own congregation. We're able to change lives in our, in our own congregation. See, the thing that gets me is, back to the sporting example, not only do people go and sit in a rainy field to watch sports, but they also have a unity. Um, you know, what if what if our church had as close of a unity as all of the Ohio State Buckeye fans or all the Pittsburgh Steelers fans? Now, some of you may may be saying, "Well, we do, we do," but do you really? If you, I don't think that that oneness is is entirely and completely there because I've heard with my own ears and seen with my own eyes and I've felt these things myself which I'm saying we need to work for I've seen that that unity is not complete and it's not one body you know like when they do the wave everybody does their part at the stadium or I saw an illustration where they actually had Ohio State Buckeyes fans 
um, dress up in blue and yellow to form a Michigan M, like all of them in the stand. So from an aerial view, it would look like a circle with a line through it that was Michigan. And just the intelligence and the amount of unity that needed to be created to make that image. I mean, you had to have hundreds of people that were each doing their part um, because if, if one person is off, the entire shape of the letter or the image changes. So you had to have hundreds of people. This, this required thought. It required time. It required planning. Or the dog pound for the Cleveland Browns. You know, I hate to pick on sports. I, you know, I respect people that, that watch sports, and I think that's it's a great thing. I, I, love, I love playing sports. I love being active. But, you know, the, the unity in that, it's okay to have that unity. It's actually encouraged. It's a great thing. But if we could bring that unity into our church and we could have that tightness and that bond and just like we memorize every single statistic about every single player uh, from their hometown to how many touchdowns they had the previous year if we if we spent time with that and on the other side of the token we divided that we devoted more attention at the very minimum just as much if if nothing else, if we devoted that amount of attention to, to, to God and to our church and to the Word, how much better off would we be? I think our entire city would be better off. The other thing is it's really, really hard to see the amount of work it takes when, the eyes, when your eyes are only on yourself. It's only when you look out at the rest of the world with, with your heart And with a giving servant's heart, it's only when you look out that you realize how broken everything else is. See, when you're focused on yourself and what you need and what you want, you you don't see how broken the rest of the world is. You don't see the needs. You don't see the needs that need to be uh, met by others. So when you look out instead of look in, you'll you'll start to see these things. And I and I just pray that my unity and my um, strength sent by God can can piece together any any Christian mission that I am ever part of because if one arm is disconnected from the body or, or the head is disconnected from the body then we have no hope we have no unity so all right that should probably conclude the the talk on on the uh, Bare Bones Church series. Um, I think I did like two or three videos on it, and I really need to start planning a closing instead of just saying, well, hey, that's it. I'm reading this book by Dale Carnegie, and he talks about how to close your talk and how the great Abraham Lincoln closed his talks, and I know that I will never be as good as Abraham Lincoln, um, but I look up to the guy. Honest Abe was good. He knew unity better than any of us. But anyways, thanks for listening. Until next time, I'll post something soon. All right. Have a good one. Bye-bye.